Today, we have a very special guest joining us, someone whose journey serves as an inspiration to everybody. Our guest is not only a survivor of sexual abuse, but has also chosen to embrace abstinence as a path towards healing and self discovery. Y'all, please help me welcome Daquin May. Thank you Hello. so much. Hello. You are so welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. So we're going to dive into your story. We have a lot to unpack. Are you ready? I don't know if I'm ready. I'm going to need your help. I'll be I here really... for you. Okay. Yes. We got Kleenex nearby. <laughs> awesome. I'll make you laugh if we need to get okay, out of it. Gotcha, okay. Gotcha. So listen, can you please share your journey as a sexual abuse survivor and how has it shaped your perspective on life in general? Wow. Wow. So my journey, my journey, it started off when I was a little girl. <sighs> Ah, oh, wow, tears is trying to come right now. But um, my journey has been um, something that I tried to overlook. Mm. You know, I did not want to be this person that went through it. So I overlooked it. I never told a soul. Wow. I ignored it, you know what I mean? And living in denial. Living in denial. Mm. And even when someone will bring it up, you know, because my brother, um, me and him, we, we talk often. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Dankwin, no, you, you've been through this. And I'm like, well, it wasn't that bad. I never thought it wow. was bad. Or like, you never I, thought it had impacted you that much in exactly. your life. Right, wow. Until I continued to learn, grow, and I started being in relationships. That's mm -hmm. when it opened my eyes. And I was like, wow, what I've been through as a little girl is now still affecting me. Wow. And I did not understand that because I was like, you know what? I, I, I didn't go through it. It wasn't that bad. It wow. wasn't that bad. Oh, yeah, this happened to me as a child. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. That's probably what helped you get through it at the time. Was it someone that was close to you? Yes, with the molestation. Um, mm. And then when I got to the age of 15. I'm so sorry than the rape. So it just continued, and I continued to say it wasn't that bad. From what age to age? I want to say from 6 to 15. <laughs> so um, just so thinking sad. about these things, um, you would think that I would just start being promiscuous and start sleeping around, but instead I did the opposite. It shut you down. Yes, mm -hmm. and I remember saying, you know, I'm going to wait until I find that perfect guy to, you know, open myself to, right? Mm -hmm. And then as the years went on, I said, you know what? I'm going to wait until I get married. And then that's when my story, my testimony happened. And what was so funny, and it's really not funny, but what was so funny about the situation was this, the simple fact that I was so embarrassed to share. Mm. I was so embarrassed to tell people what I've been through because they will look at me different. Of course. So what gave you and when did you find the courage to tell someone that you had been molested and that you had been raped? TikTok gave me the courage to really? tell my testimony. Wow. And, but, and I, I, I watched it, like, I, I'm sorry, like I'm really no. I'm trying to hold back tears. Take your time. I'm trying to hold back. So you felt like TikTok was a platform that so many people go to, and of course they would be able to see you share what you've been through. What on TikTok motivated you to say, hey, this is what happened to me when I was a child? I just didn't think people would see it. So I was like, you know. Mm. Can we please get some Kleenex, guys? So I said, you know, I'm going to post this video. I, I woke up one morning and... God told me, God literally said, get up and do this survivor video. Mm. Um, so I got up, I posted it, and I was like, nobody's going to see it. Like, it's just, but I felt good. I didn't Just care. to get it out. Get yes. it off your shoulders, off your heart. I felt like I did something great because I actually was able to say something mm -hmm. and do something. Yes. And then the video took off, and I was like, oh, no, because I was not expecting that. Now you're like, oh, everybody knows my story now. <laughs> and that's how it happened. Yes. And um, you'll be surprised. A lot of people have gone through these things. A lot of people have. Yes. And they they've have. been hiding it. They've been fighting it. Yes. And me stepping out gave other people courage to make the same video 
and do the same survivor video. Of and what it also through. let you know that you weren't the only one. You thought you were holding it in, you were embarrassed, and then you realize, oh my God, this has happened to so many people. Yes. And you unlock that door for them to say, hey, this happened to me too. That's so powerful. Thank that you. takes a lot of courage. Thank you. Thank you for that. Ooh, so what motivated you to embrace abstinence as a personal choice? God, you know, I've been raised in church and, you know, they say, oh, wait until you have sex and get married. Yes, wait, wait, child. Wait. It was a thing. Yes. But it was something that me and God came into agreement with. I, I didn't care about what my parents said, what the pastor said, what church. It was an agreement between me and God. It's a personal journey. Yes. And I said, this is what I'm going to do. And I still standing on it till this day. That's strong. Till this day. Y'all better give it up for her. That's strong. <laughs> Like, My goodness, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yes, and I just can't believe I, I, I'm still going. I'm like, God, okay, where's my husband? But you know what? <laughs> God will send him in time, right? in his time. Yes. I don't think we're supposed to be looking, y'all. I think exactly. we're just supposed to be moving along, be prepared, do what we're supposed to be doing, not waiting around, but just knowing that when God is ready, it will happen. Yes. And that's where I am. Yes. And if I don't ever again, <laughs> I will know that God did not want Amen. me to. Amen. Come on. So abstinence is a personal choice that may face criticism or misunderstanding from others. How do you handle external opinions or societal pressures regarding your decisions? Because you date, right? Yes. So what you going to tell a man when you start dating him? I'm not having sex with you. <laughs> and what? <laughs> And what, how do they react to that? Um, they're respectful. I, I love I that. Have, I have not had a bad situation with that topic. Thank you, guys. I have not. That's so everything. It's something that I feel like you should be open about. Yes. And letting them know. Yes. You know, you don't want to wait until it gets serious or when it's when they're hot and bothered and just mm -hmm. say, oh, by the way, I'm waiting. Correct. So, and then a lot of them, they know my testimony. They know it. Mm -hmm. It's on social media. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it has not been a bad journey for me. It's beautiful. And I, I really don't that. care what people have to say. Right. Because again, this was a personal conversation between me and God. Correct. And I don't care about the naysayers. I don't care who has to say anything about what I'm doing and what I'm standing I'm for. I'm with you on that. People talk about, uh, God, you and God have a personal relationship. So the per personal relationship is also everything else that I consider personal. Like these, I decided not to do this, God. I'm not going to do this. Yes. It's only between me and him. And if I decide to share it with someone else, I'm sharing it standing on his promise. Exactly. You know what I'm Amen. saying? Woo! So listen, mm. what are some <laughs> misconceptions people might have about people practicing abstinence? Now I went through I went through three years of abstinence. I okay. never made an announcement. I'm just telling y'all now. But what I'm saying <laughs> is I did go through it and it never really bothered me. I was so busy and I felt like I had so much baggage yeah. that I didn't want to bring it in anybody's life anyway. Mm -hmm. So taking that time out to just like detox, purify, meditate get to know me because I'd been a wife for 20 something years and I was just kind of like, I don't even know who I am. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So going through that pause was so good for me. Yes. What about with you? Man, I would say, I would say the same. Like I feel amazing. I feel like God saved me through a lot of bad relationships mm. that could have went left. Mm. And it saved me a lot of things, like like a heartbreaks, heartaches, you know, testimonies, trials. There's been times when I was dating and because they found that out about me, they decided, oh, well, you know, well, it's fine, move on. I'm like, great, that's amazing. Yes, exactly. Because now I know what you are in this relationship for. Correct. Because a relationship and intimacy is not always having sex. Correct. And we need to start getting to know the people that we're with instead of mm. getting to know the bed. Exactly. So for me, it saved me a lot, a lot of different things that I feel, I feel great. All I can say is amen to that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So forgiving oneself is often a challenging aspect of healing. How have you navigated self-forgiveness? That's a part of my book. Yes. So that, <laughs> let's talk about this. I feel like self-forgiveness is being honest with yourself first. Mm. A lot of times we like to overlook things and or we like to be the victim and we like to blame others. But we have to understand that we had a part in it as well. 
And I feel now, like- Now let me ask you something. Do you feel like you had a part at five, six years old that, that is, you need to be accountable for? That, no. Not at all? No. String them up. You no. had nothing to do with that at all. Yes. But as you move forward and you're navigating through the waters of everything you're dealing yes, with, that now point. you're accountable because yes. you, know, you have the knowledge, you have the understanding. Exactly. Now it's like you move differently. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. So could you speak about the role of support systems and community in your healing process? Hmm. Did you keep all of that in? Did you talk to anybody? The role of support systems. Like, did you have a support system? Ugh, that's about to make me cry again. TikTok no, was your support system. No, not, not necessarily. No? Um, okay. I keep a couple of people around, mm -hmm. you know, that I can talk to. My brother, one, being that's one. That's awesome. Um, you know, even though I grew up in church, church was not the community, unfortunately. Um, but I did find great people, you know, mm -hmm. within the church. That's good. Um, that I was able to speak to. But really, I'll say my brother. I, I love, love that. him. <laughs> What's your brother's first name? Darren. Darren! And he's also in the book. He's, this is it, awesome. He's in one of the quotes. You know, this is a beautiful book. It's thank called you. Forgive. Yes. And not only is it a journal or you call it a journal? Yes, a guided journal. A guided journal for everyone. The the packaging is amazing. Thank like you, you so did much. such a wonderful job. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Tell us a little bit about your book. So about my journal is a is a is a guide um, for healing. Um, moving on from trauma. Um, I have discovery questions in there. It mm -hmm. will ask you like, you know, triggering questions to get you thinking. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into the activity. So not only you're writing down things, but you're acting on it. Oh, I so love it will it. tell you, give that person a call. Oh, I love and it. Action items. Yes. Yes. And because it's like, okay, you guys, we can talk about this. We can talk about that. Let's start putting things into action. You have to. Exactly. Be Faith without works is dead. When we got Yes! Hello, everyone. If you are at work, at home, y'all drop everything and tune in because it's time for the Sisonka <laughs> Show! Yeah! <laughs> Listen, I'm just kidding. Don't y'all get fired. Don't drop everything at work. Listen, speaking of fire, y'all.